All right, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, as promised, uh, we are joined uh, today, we're delighted to be joined uh, today by Ismail Shergi, the African Union Commissioner for Peace and Security, and of course by Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the Under Secretary General of the Department of Peace Operations. They are here to brief you following the meetings that we had just concluded on the Central African Republic. Gentlemen, please. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for your patience. As indicated uh, yesterday, we had the chance to brief the Security Council on uh, the situation on Central Africa Republic, but mainly on the peace agreement that was signed on the 6th of February in Bangui after two weeks of negotiations in, uh, in Khartoum. So we think that this is a very good achievement for the people of Central Africa Republic first, who have suffered enough. This agreement is different from those signed before in the way that we, uh, we have uh, been a little bit creative in addressing mainly the root causes of the conflict and taking specific measures in terms of security, in terms of justice, in terms of inclusivity, in terms of equitable distribution of the wealth between all the regions of the country. More importantly, for this agreement, we have a robust me support mechanism. Uh, so uh, hopefully with, uh, with all these uh, dispositions, uh, this time things might be different, and we have been just encouraged now by the meeting uh, organized by my good friend Jean-Pierre Lacroix and his team with the partners. We received an overwhelming support and uh, for the agreement and also for the, its implementation. So I would like to stop here and uh, hand over to Jean-Pierre. Thank you, uh, Smail. Uh, I don't have much to add. I think uh, uh, we have uh, a great opportunity to bring peace uh, back uh, to Central African Republic and to the Central African Republic uh, people. We have uh, worked together very, very closely with the African Union. Uh, and I think what uh, makes the difference there is that uh, very strong commitment and, uh, and unity between the two organizations. Uh, the way we work together, and uh, I really commend the leadership by the AU and by Commissioner Shaggy in uh, taking forward the discussion. Uh, but we also had the involvement of the countries in the region, which is extremely important to secure the uh, success of the agreement. And uh, we had um, opening and uh, a spirit of dialogue that was uh, demonstrated both uh, by His Excellency the President of the Central African Republic, the government, but also the other uh, parties. Uh, but today, uh, what we really uh, wanted to put the emphasis on is the need to go quickly uh, and to uh, support the agreement, both politically, um, but also uh, very practically. Uh, this morning, we had a meeting with the uh, partners of the Central African Republic, and we uh, emphasized the key element of the agreement. Uh, we uh, uh, circulated the uh, temporary uh, timeline um, uh, highlighting the key uh, measures uh, that are provided for by the agreement and uh, the actions that are already undertaken to support the implementation of these measures. But we also uh, insisted that uh, uh, there is a need for further support and we are glad to, to hear from uh, uh, the uh, partners of uh, of uh, this undertaking, the key partners, the donors, that uh, there is a readiness to support, and we welcome that. Uh, but time is of the essence, and uh, also our common, our common uh, commitment and engagement uh, is also key, really critical to, to ensure that this time around, uh, peace uh, will actually uh, uh, return to Central African Republic. <clears throat> Take some questions. Maggie?
Thank you so much for the briefing. Uh, I'm Margaret Bashir with the Voice of America. Uh, Mr. Lacroix, can you talk about uh, if there is a role for the United Nations in the implementation of this peace agreement and how it will affect MINUSCA? Yes, I mean, there is certainly a, a very important role for the UN. Actually, there is a role for uh, many of us, for the African Union, for the UN, uh, other partners as well. Uh, but uh, MINUSCA is, uh, is uh, present in the Central African Republic, and uh, so are many uh, agency funds and programs. Um, and uh, the agreement has uh, a number of key elements regarding, uh, first of all, follow-up mechanism. Um, and uh, we commend the uh, President of the Central African Republic for having already put in place uh, uh, the uh, uh, the. The, co the commission that will be uh, supervising the implementation of the agreement, um, key elements regarding uh, security arrangement, including the uh, um, establishment of uh, uh, mixed uh, units uh, uh, as a temporary uh, measure uh, to restore confidence and to prepare for uh, the re uh, return of uh, legitimate security institution in the country. Um, key. Uh, provisions regarding decentralization as well as uh, justice and reconciliation and all these key and of course I should add uh, the need to uh, increase the support uh, to the population of the Central African Republic. So all these uh, elements are extremely important and I think for all these key uh, provisions of the agreement uh, there is a very important role, a very important role for, the, for the United Nations and particularly for MINUSCA. And we are currently looking at uh, how uh, not only can MINUSCA and the UN uh, support uh, the implementation of the agreement, but also potentially uh, what kind of adjustments to our uh, current priorities um, we can uh, provide for so as to be as effective as necessary uh, in this action. Thank you. Yeah, Evelyn? Sorry, <clears throat> Evelyn Leopold. Um, how confident are you that the rebel groups will abide by the agreement? First, it's the first time that the 14 armed groups represented that, uh, at the highest level were present and discussed directly with the government. All of them signed this peace agreement in person. And uh, three, I think, uh, uh, on a daily on a daily basis, I mean, uh, Minusca is reporting that the situation now on the ground is uh, is quiet, and ICRC did also the same right now. Another element that uh, I think, in his wisdom, the president of the republic, uh, President Tuadera, is also. Uh, having now a direct dialogue with all these groups. As we speak, he's talking to them and uh, in his, uh, in the, in, to implement the issue of inclusivity, I mean, he will do also some gesture to include some of this movement in, uh, in the action of the government. So these are some elements, certainly not all, but this is just to indicate that as we speak, normally things are on track and hopefully they will hold. But on the other hand, we also have to deliver on some key uh, element that we have in the agreement, especially uh, the one indicated by Jean-Pierre on the, uh, this joint special unit on security to work under the leadership of the government and MINUSCA to secure, for example, the issue of transhumans, which is at the heart of many uh, conflicts and crises, not only within the country, but even with the, uh, with the countries uh, in the region. I mean, the voisins, the, I hope, I hope I, I respond to your question. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, Perhaps a question for both of you. Um, in CAR, 
we've seen of late. Uh, Russia's been increasing their sort of assistance and presence in the country, which has sort of led to a bit of a standoff with France. We've seen that play out here at the Security Council. Maybe you could just comment on this for us and let us know, are you concerned? Is this helpful, a hindrance? How does this play out on the ground in country? Mm, the Central African Republic need partners and uh, it needs as many partners as it, as it uh, uh, you know, the, the, the needs are uh, just uh, huge. Um, and, uh, you know, the two countries that you mentioned, as well as many others, uh, were present this morning and uh, they committed to supporting the agreement and they committed to supporting the implementation of the agreement. Um, so, uh, you know, now we have a momentum and that momentum is also a great opportunity to uh, ensure that all the partners of the Central African Republic will rally around one objective, which is the implementation of this peace agreement. Uh, Maria and then Nabil. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Hrenova, TASS News Agency. Another question related to Russia. Actually, yesterday on Security Council, two issues were mentioned. One of them, the death of Russian journalists in uh, Central African Republic in July. Uh, so if there is uh, any new information about the investigation of this case. And another one was uh, about uh, investigation of uh, uh, Russians uh, of some media reports, uh, reports of Russians who tortured allegedly um, a citizen of uh, uh, Central African Republic, and uh, if there is really such investigation, and if there is such investigation, do you have any information about it to share? I think yesterday the foreign minister of CAR was here, and she did say that the investigation has been opened by the Minister of Justice, and at this stage we cannot comment uh, or have or give you any additional information, but I think on, on both issues, on the issue of uh, the uh, unfortunate uh, killing of uh, the journalist, but also the issue of violence that you indicated. I think she, she did say that the government has opened a probe in those issues. And uh, was this issue about the second one, uh, the violence, was it mentioned in uh, the report of uh, United Nations experts? As I say, um, and as uh, my friend Smail uh, was indicating, now uh, we have an investigation by the Central African uh, authorities. And, uh, uh, you know, if uh, they ask us to... Uh, be in contact with uh, with them, of course, uh, we'll be ready. But at the same time, uh, it is now in the hand of the uh, relevant authorities of the Central African Republic. And I don't think uh, it would be wise for us uh, to uh, make any additional comments. Uh, my question is to Mr. Ismail. Uh, I'm Nabil Abisab, Al Hurra correspondent. Uh, you know, there is a debate in the Council about the sanctions on uh, Central African Republic. What's your position on that? And do you think that uh, the sanctions regime should be updated or changed in light of the uh, peace agreement? Well, uh, <coughs> if you ask me, uh, we had the demonstration in Bangui while the negotiations were going on and it was a complicating factor because at the time when we are looking to silence the guns, you cannot go and ask for more armaments. So it has been, it has been interpreted uh, in, in, in a negative way. But I think this regime of sanctions does not impede or they're not uh, will uh, is allowing the government through the security council to acquire any equipment including armaments if need be what we need today is really to continue through the leadership of un and minusca to really uh, be in total control of circulation of any armaments and uh, make sure that we are building uh, an army which is inclusive, which is uh, in full respect of human rights, 
of uh, international human rights uh, laws and also uh, be, it should also include women. So it's a, it's a full approach. I think we have to really get lessons from what happened in the FACA before so that today we will build an army that can be, that can be uh, really the protector of, uh, of the uh, order and the institution of the country without going in any discrimination whatsoever or wrongdoing. So this is very important in relation with the, the, the values that UN and Africa Union are promoting. Thank you. Last question will go to Ali. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Iftikhar Ali from Associated Press of Pakistan. So the, uh, the agreement that you have announced is so wide-ranging, especially the uh, subject of equitable distribution of wealth. Is there any timeline on it? It's such a political subject, this equitable distribution of wealth. Uh, is there any timeline on uh, the implementation of the agreement? Well, the agreement uh, contains uh, a number of uh, um, timeline on, on the key provisions. Obviously, the uh, equitable uh, uh, distribution of wealth uh, is uh, uh, an objective, a very important one. Uh, but I, I would say that most, if not all, the provisions of the agreement uh, regarding security, regarding decentralization, of course, regarding the follow-up uh, and uh, the uh, further implementation of the uh, uh, plan of uh, development plan for the Central African Republic, the, uh, uh, currently uh, uh, currently uh, in place, uh, all these uh, elements will uh, will contribute to uh, this objective of uh, equitable distribution of wealth. Um, I, I would say that it's probably a, a in a way, a, a more longer-term uh, objective uh, than uh, many of the uh, key uh, elements of the agreement uh, for which uh, uh, there are timelines that are uh, relatively short and hence the importance of uh, uh, a very rapid and substantial mobilization of all support. Uh, but clearly, as you rightly underline, uh, that objective of uh, uh, um, equitable sharing of the uh, resources of the country is, uh, is a very important one. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Merci beaucoup. Merci. And we'll start the briefing in two seconds.